Hello, my name is Paul Miners and welcome back to another one of my Asana training videos. In this video, I want to give you an introduction to how you can get started with Asana for basic project management. I'm gonna walk through how to create a project and I'm gonna show you some of the features that you can use to help you move your project forward more efficiently. This video is intended more for beginners who haven't spent too much time with Asana, so I won't be covering all the features of Asana in this video, but if you do want to learn more, then check out the other videos on my channel. If you have any questions after this video, please feel free to leave me a comment below. And if you would like one-on-one -on -one help with setting up or optimizing your Asana account, or maybe you want to improve the adoption of Asana within your team, then click the link in the description below to learn more about my Asana consulting options. To create my new project in Asana, I can either click the Create button up here and choose to create a new project, or I can click the Plus button in the Project section of my sidebar. You can start your project using a template or by importing from a spreadsheet, but for this demo, I'm just going to start with a blank project so I can talk through the steps a little bit more. I'm going to give my project a name, so let's pretend I'm launching a new product, so I'll just call this New Product Launch, uh, but obviously I would be more specific with the project. I can then choose what team I want to put the project in. And if I make this project public, everyone in this team will be able to see the project, even if they're not an active project member. So I can put it in the team and I can leave it public if I want my team to have access, or I can choose to make the project private if I only want certain individuals to be able to access this project. So I'll, I'll keep it private for now. One of the great things about Asana is it supports different types of project view. So we have, as you can see here, the traditional list view where I can see my tasks and I can see various custom fields and assignees and dates. There's also a board layout, which is sort of this Kanban style of working where you can move tasks through various stages. This is great for projects that follow a particular workflow. There's a timeline view. If you're a very visual person, if you want to see when tasks start and finish, if you want to see the dependencies of tasks, the timeline view is great. And I find that this view works really well, especially for projects where you're working backwards from a important deadline, like an event or, or in this case, maybe a new product launch. And then finally, there is the monthly calendar view where you can see tasks due on particular days. It doesn't really matter what you choose because you can change the view later. Uh, if you're not sure, I just recommend starting with the list. Um, I'm going to start adding um, tasks to my project, and so we're going to go to my project now. Before I start inputting any tasks, I'm actually going to go to the overview section first, and on this page I can write a bit of a summary of the project and insert some key resources and things. So I can put in here maybe uh, project description and goals. We'll use this project to plan the launch of our new product. The goal is to generate 100K in sales in the first year, something like that. So I can just use this area to explain a little bit more about what the project is about. I can also add different project members here. So I might choose to add, uh, let's say Warwick on my team, and I can choose what kind of access and permission I want to give him. And so because this project is private, only Warwick and I can see this project and the tasks in the project right now. The other members of my team, so this project is in the pool miners team here, other members of this team cannot see this project right now. Down here, we can choose to link this project to various goals. I'm not gonna be talking about that in this video, but I do have very detailed training on how to use goals in my master Asana program. Click the link in the description to learn more uh, about that but I can create, add key resources down here. So I can either create a more detailed project brief if I want to expand on the description and, and uh, write more details of what the project is about. I can also add links and files in here if there are various documents that support this project that my team uh, need access to. Once I'm happy with the details on the overview page, I'm gonna go back to my list view. And the first thing I recommend doing is creating some sections, which we will use to organize the tasks into different stages or phases. And how you use sections will vary depending on the type of project you, that you are creating. So for something like this new product launch, I might say, I might have sections for phases where I say phase one is about planning. I might have another section for phase two, uh, production. And then I might do one more section for phase three, launch. 
So sections are just used to organize the tasks into different areas. Once I have my sections ready to go, I would then create some milestones. Milestones are sort of like tasks, but they are the more significant, important tasks. Think of them as like the deliverables or major due dates within a project. So I'm going to have a milestone. Let's put this into the planning section. So we might have a milestone for product specifications uh, defined. That would be a major milestone is, is working out the specs of the product. I might have a, a couple of um, couple of milestones down here in production for uh, production testing complete. I might do another one here for uh, production run uh, started, and then pr production run complete. And actually, I set these up as tasks. But if I right click, whoops, if I right click, I can mark as milestones, so I can easily convert them to milestones like this. And then let's let's do one more in the launch. Let's just say, you know, product launch day. Okay, so those are my milestones. Those are the major deadlines or significant uh, kind of deliverables in the project. And you'll see those appearing on your overview page down in the milestones section. Now I can actually go through the process of creating tasks for sort of the smaller steps that we need to do to actually complete these various phases and stages of work. So in this planning section, I might have tasks for um, uh, product, law, uh, product design meeting. That might be a task. Um, design product packaging. Maybe I'll do another one here for um, product marketing plan complete. And there we go. I've added a couple more down here in the launch phase for sending an email to our newsletter and posting on social media. I can also, if I click one of these line items, I can open the task here and I could add subtasks if I want to further break down a task into smaller steps. So I might say Facebook and Instagram, uh, you know, posting on social media, I wanna make sure we post on various platforms. Now, arguably the most important bits of information about a task are what is the task about, but also who's doing it and when is it due? Because if we don't assign the task, if we don't have a date, it's probably not gonna get done. So if I click on a task like this one here at the top, I can uh, choose an assignee. And you can only assign a task to one person at a time. This is by design because uh, Asana kind of believes that if you can assign a task to more than one person, each person's gonna feel less accountable, like, oh, the other person will do it. And so there's less ownership of that task. So Asana does force you to pick you know, somebody on the team to really own that task. And so I can either click here in the column or I can click in the task details here to assign this to various people on my team. I can also put due dates on my tasks. That could either be a singular due date if I just need the task to be completed before a specific day, or in this case here, design product packaging. This is something that might take a few days or a few weeks. So I could actually apply a date range to my task like this. And so now I've got a start and end date. And so I might continue going through my project now and, and setting up assignees and dates for everything. So my project's coming together pretty nicely now. I've planned my work into different phases. I've identified the major milestones of the project and the tasks that we need to complete. And I've identified who is doing what and when different tasks need to be completed. You can go into further detail with your tasks. In the description, you can see I've put some notes so that when I uh, click on this task and I view this, or if this is actually you know, assigned to somebody on my team and they look at the task, they can see the notes, they can, um, they've got everything they need in one place. I can also attach documents from my computer or from Google Drive uh, to this task. So again, when Warwick in this case sits down to work on the task, he's got the task details in front of him, all the attachments, notes, and uh, we can actually have conversations inside of Asana here as well. So again, he really has everything in one place in order to make progress on this particular task. Now, just to show you the couple uh, of other views that we have access to. So this is the list view that I mentioned before. If I check, if I go to my board layout, you can see my sections uh, just turn into columns and I can see my tasks vertically here. I personally really like the timeline view. And if I zoom out a little bit here, I can see very visually when different tasks start and finish. I can see my milestones with these green lines down the screen here. And a feature that I really like on the timeline is that I can actually link um, tasks and create what are called dependencies. So if I hover my mouse on this task and grab this little blue dot, I can drag this onto a task. And you see this little 
arrow here, this, is, this has created what's called a dependency. So now, this is telling me that I can't start on this task because it is blocked by this previous task that Warwick needs to do. And Warwick can see that his task is blocking my task. So it really helps to establish, you know, an important sequence of uh, in which tasks need to be completed so that we can move the work forwards. And then if there's a delay to this task, Asana can automatically shift mine back accordingly as well. So that's the timeline view. And then we have the calendar view as well, where I can see sort of a monthly view when and when different tasks are due. Now, I'm not going to get into this in this video, but I do just want to point out that Asana gives you some nice customization options. So under my customize menu here, I can add additional fields to my project if I want to track my time or set the status or priority of a task, I can, I can add custom fields. I can also create automation rules if I want updates to happen to tasks when I complete or update a task, have that notify certain people, I can use those automation rules. I can connect various apps like uh, Google and Microsoft apps, Zoom, Slack, and so on to help Asana talk more effectively with my, my other uh, tools. I can create forms that link into Asana where I can fill in a form to create new tasks in this project and you can create task templates for repetitive tasks that you need to do again and again. Uh, so slightly more advanced features I won't get to in this video, but again, click the link in the description below if you do want to get access to my more detailed video training. Now, as we start working on the project, it's important to keep tasks and the project itself as up-to-date as possible, because if we're not updating Asana, then it's really not that useful as a tool. So on a daily basis, you should be updating your tasks. You could be posting comments and questions down here in the comments so you can communicate with members of the team. So I could, I could type down here at Warwick, um, can you attend this meeting? And so we can, we can post conversations in here I can collaborate with my team and uh, get the input that I need to make progress on various tasks. Of course, when the work is done, it's important to mark the task as complete, either up here or by ticking this little circle. And that's gonna notify the collaborators on the task that that bit of work is now done. And so we clearly know where we're at in the project. It's also important to keep your project plan up to date. So if you feel like you're not gonna be able to hit certain deadlines, I recommend updating the due date on tasks so that we have a new target deadline that we can work towards. And as you progress through the project, you can post a status update on the overview page. You can set the status of the entire project as either on track, which generally implies that the project is going well and you're, you're meeting your deadlines. You can change the status of the project to at risk if you're maybe falling behind a little bit, or off track if you're really behind and uh, the project needs uh, you know, to be seriously looked at. So I can set my status up here and I can post a, a more of a qualitative update. I can write a summary about how the project is going. I can talk about what we've accomplished recent, recently, what's blocked, what we're working on next. And Asana does give me some useful um, highlights that I can bring in here if I want to report on what we've recently accomplished or um, what we still have left to work on. And so when I post this project update, this is gonna get shared with the members of the project. So everyone is kept in the loop about how the project is going. So there we go. That is a little look at how to get started with Asana for project management. Like I said, we really have just scratched the surface in this video. If you would like to learn more about how to get more out of Asana and some of the more advanced features that we didn't cover, like the customization options, rules, goals, portfolios, then check out my other videos or click the link in the description below to learn more about my Asana consulting options. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.